Awesome. All right, all right, we got some. Let's do it. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so uh, thank you again for for being here today. This is our twenty one guide to Google Maps and how to get your auto repair shop ranked in in that map pack. It's so crucial to, to be able to get ranked in there. There's so so many benefits that we'll go over in terms of um, ranking in that map pack. But this this right here is our our online mastery method, and so. There's by by following all these different steps here. Um, we're obviously we're not going to go over all of them today, but by by going through all these different steps, um, th th this will really help you really maximize your lead flow across the board and, and really leveraging Google, social media, all these different platforms. So through SEO, pay per click, you really you're really able to attack Google. Social media really just really helps that reputation management um, and, and and making sure that your 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 outsourcing and and your your communication wise is, is going is going out really well, and and then we have, we have text message marketing that really helps you get more reviews and and kind of with loyalty branding um you can build out those coupons or rewards et cetera, and so, but today and specifically we're going to be going over um, the Google Maps, and so just to take a step back though um to just get your attention I know I know it's I know it's hard but I'm I'm grateful that you guys are here so if you could turn off your cell phones. Um, turn off your Facebook, and then can, just kind of give us our, your, your undivided attention here for the next 45 to 60 minutes here that, that really will, will help you um, stay focused and really take in all the different, hopefully value add points that we have here to really help you rank well in Google. And so what, what we will cover today, so we'll, we'll be covering the latest updates with Google map listing. So. I don't know how closely you all have been following Google Maps, but over the years, it has changed quite a bit. And Google just likes to throw curveballs at people all the time and um, and really and really limiting the different different places that, you, that you're able to see um, just different viewpoints. So there's there's ads now above the maps. Maps used to be really long and now it's now it's down to three. Now you can put ads within the maps. And so there's just all these different different things within the, the viewership within searching in Google. And so we're going to go over those things today. And we'll go over um, what we've seen as the five biggest issues that could be preventing you from ranking in the maps. And then we'll, we'll, then we'll go into more of our proven model for ranking in the three pack. It's kind of a four step method that we, we, we like to focus on. And then on top of that, we know that, I mean, we, we wanna be able to systemize and auto automate the, the heavy lifting for you. And so we'll go over some tools and things that really help you make, make this process a lot smoother, a lot easier, and even if you already have a marketing company or anything like that, you're able to help show them these tools that maybe they aren't already leveraging that, that can make their processes a lot more efficient. And, and so who I am and why you should be listening to me today. And so uh, I'm, I'm one of the co-founders of Lyft Auto Repair Marketing. Um, we, we focus solely on the auto repair industry and we, we have a big passion in regards to the auto repair industry and really wanting to help this field. And so some other some of the side things um, we've my wife and I we've co-founded four different companies now and so with that it's really helped us being able to focus on the business side of things and how to properly run a business and and that that's kind of given us a different um, a different scope of how things sh should be run effectively that really helps your business grow and so I've also been a speaker at an annual entrepreneur conference um, and and with that we we were able to get rewarded of some of the, one being one of the fastest growing small businesses there. So, and again, this is this is what we do. Um, our, our mission here at Lyft Auto Repair Marketing is to triple the sales of 1,000 auto repair shops. We know that's a that's a really big goal, but we we think it's definitely um, a thing a feat that we can reach. And we are really passionate about, again helping owners get that financial freedom and getting that time back to be able to spend more time with their family as well as building that legacy and leaving it behind. Um, for for their for their family and and for the community, and so now now the, the big sort of hairy question of is is, is like is the juice worth the squeeze? So do do Google Map do Google Maps even matter? So in in the chat, if if you can if you can type in for me, so if, when you go into Google, are you looking in the maps? Are you looking in say Yelp? Are you looking in the organic search rating, the ads? Well, what, what are you guys looking at in terms of when you when you type in um, the searches? So we have maps, uh, we have another maps, uh, we have an organic search person. So, okay, cool, cool. So, I mean, across the board, but I mean, overall, 
we, we believe Google Maps matter. And so we, we, we did sort of a big analysis of where all the clicks and calls were coming from across the board from different avenues of businesses that we help. And so through all that data collection, we've noticed that about 44% of clicks and calls were coming from the map section. And so that, that is a, a, a large size of clicks and calls still coming from the maps, even regardless of all the ads now that they're putting on top of Google um, and then still the, the large organic search ratings. So this the fact that nearly 50% of the clicks and calls are still coming from there kind of shows the importance of the Google map map. And so, yes, uh, and the, at the answer at the end of the day is yes, Google Maps definitely matter. They drive calls. And even if you believe that for your business, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's a really large um, portion of, of the Google search landscape. And so it really, it's just beneficial to have another spot where your business is appearing and showing relevance for um, your community as they are looking for an auto repair shop in, in your area. And so you can't just rely on pay-per-click alone. I know some people are diehard uh, pay-per-click fans. I mean, it, it, it's like a rocket fuel. It really definitely will boost and help your business, but there are definitely other avenues. And we believe with Google Maps, I mean, there's a really strong ROI there if you're able to build your, um, your map pack correctly. And just with like build, building that presence, you don't need to spend on ads every single month to do that. And we'll, we'll, we'll walk through some of the biggest changes that have happened um, in Google over the last little bit. And so... For the last few years, I don't know if you've noticed, but before the Google Maps session used to have seven, and now we're down, we're down to just three here. And so this is Google kind of narrowing the landscape, really focusing on showing the top players in the area and really just trying to give the consumer the most relevant outcomes for them. That they, they, they've just found with seven was just too long of a listing. And so they've just they've really limited it down. And so there's also Google is serving paid ads in the map results. Before, um, ad results were only featured on the very top of the maps. But now, as you can see here, there are ads featuring within the map section. So we'll go over a little bit how to get an ad in, in that map section. Because as, as you know, maps are really beneficial. They'll get you a lot of clicks and a lot of calls. So why not spend some ad money there if you're, if you're struggling to get in the map back in the short term or while you're building that presence there? And then we have the Google local service app. So the, this doesn't quite associate with auto shops yet, um, but the, the local services ads with Google, they're always implementing and adding new niches and in industries all the time. And so it's something just to be aware of and, um, and understand how to use. And so I don't know if you've searched for a roofer or a plumber or an attorney in your area, but you'll find that Google guaranteed section here on the very top of Google where it shows some businesses with the green check mark. So there's a process that Google has to get you approved and in there. And I'm, I'm sure, I mean, it's, it's just another money maker for Google. And so I'm sure soon down the road that you'll, you'll we'll start seeing auto repair shops in that section as well. And so like, like I mentioned, it's typically just home services right now, but I, I would be prepared for the, for like um, expanding and growing here one day. And here it's kind of a side by side comparison about we, we have like what it used to be with the seven pack now, no longer, we're just looking at this three pack with, with ads. And so the, like, like I mentioned, the big thing that, that Google has added is creating this ad section within, within the maps. It's been a really beneficial thing for Google, but also for local businesses. Um, there's, especially for newer newer local businesses, because I mean, when you, when you have these long established companies that have hundreds and hundreds of reviews, and you're just getting started, it's really hard to get into that landscape and, and really start bringing in that lead funnel for you early. And so that by, by spending some money on ads within the maps, it's kind of allowed you to, to um, get into that sooner rather than later. And so to set that up here, if, if any of you have experience setting up an ad campaign, or if not, you can easily show someone how to do it if, you, if someone else is helping you on your team. But when you go to set up a campaign, there's just gonna be this new toggle here that says local store visits and promotions. So you'd go ahead and click on this, this field, go to the next step. And all it really will do is it'll link your Google My Business to this Google ad campaign that you're creating. And when that happens, you, you'll, you'll still set up your ad campaign the same way, but now your ads will start appearing in the map section. Okay, and so this, and so this has become now the lay of, lay of the land. We have the AdWords, we have the Google My Business with the ads and then the organic search ratings. So it's, it doesn't hurt to get into each of these pieces because really, I mean, being in that top portion of your gang search is going to really help you being in the top portion of the map pack. And then um, 
by optimizing your ad spend this way, you can also then have your name appearing in the ad section. Okay, and so that because at the end of the, at, at the end of the day, you want to own the search results. I mean, you you don't you don't want to you don't want to pick and choose and say, oh, I only want to be one thing. Oh, I only oh, I only want to do ads because that's what's working. I mean, if you if you find yourself in all these four different locations, that's four spots that not your business is appearing compared to other businesses appearing in only one. And so, really, the the, the four different mechanisms that you want to look at in the search are the Google ads, the map listings making sure you're listed in, in 30 third party listings like yelp because they, they appear pretty often high in, in that organic listing and just getting your website overall listed organically well so another thing that google has done is really crack down on the the fake google map listings by around 70 percent since 2015 so pretty drastic so so I don't know if you've noticed before where there there'd be some auto repair shops listed that were almost it, it just would be like auto repair Houston, and that'd be the name of the name of their business. But it, it was just a way for them to link a website to the main business as a whole. It was just a spam listing. And so Google has really done a good job of cracking down on all these different businesses where people registered for Google, Google My Businesses in, in kind of the surrounding cities where their shop wasn't really located, but they wanted customer bases there. So that's something to definitely definitely um, look out for as, as you go and and do that if, if, if maybe I don't know if anyone has done that in the past, but definitely you want to look at that because that can be flagged for a spam. And what could be hurting your ranking ranking on the map? So the first thing is you definitely want your shop in the city that you're targeting to rank well in. So if if say I'm I'm in Austin, but I, I want to rank in Round Rock. The, the only way that you're going to also rank in Round Rock is to have a shop there. I mean, that's there's 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 too much competition in order to have it separated out. You, you, you cannot have then just get a P.O. box in Round Rock to then direct traffic over to your business in in Austin where your shop is. It's just not going to work that way. Um, it, it worked that way a few years ago where people just kind of they got their aunt and uncle's addresses around the surrounding cities and, and made sure they had Google My Businesses literally listed all over the place. And so that but that mechanism just doesn't work anymore. So if, you, if you're going to expand, you need a real shop and build another separate listing and, and making sure that everything matches across the board. And so like I mentioned before, did I would reflect and making sure that you did, did you try to spam Google with fake locations? If, if that happened to be you, I would I would really go in and look at and deleting those listings because even if you're lucky enough that Google hasn't found it yet, their their algorithm is getting smarter and smarter every day. And so you don't want to get flagged and then your main business location gets flagged and suspended and you're starting over from scratch from zero reviews. That that would be a really big detriment to your business. So I'd really look at those. And then you, then you want to look at the inconsistent name, address, and phone number profile across all your citations. And so it's very important that the, the, the name profile that you create on your Google My Business matches across the board and on what you want to be represented as. I've seen many businesses list um, their business name, but then they put auto repair, brake repair. And they just kind of list other services to sort of spam that listing to get more search results. And yes, I mean, in, in that short, immediate term, and that may work, but in the long run, Google's going to find that and it's going to realize that, oh, your citations aren't matching together. Is this even a real business? And then you get flagged and get brought down. And then did you spam your city in a company or category? Just like I mentioned before, I mean, there's also, if you, people will put their business name and add the city that they're in, even though that's not included in their legal business name. Now, if that is a part of your legal business name, that, that does play a part that does benefit you by being in there. But again, you wanna make sure that it is your legal business name and then it matches across the board, um, across kind of all the citations that are online. And then lastly, do you have enough re reviews across the board? I mean, you wanna make sure that you're building reviews and building reputation because about 97% of the people that click on a given business before they go into it are clicking at the reviews and reading them. So you want to make sure you have enough reviews across the web that even, even outside of Google, even on Yelp and Facebook and things, just making sure that um, people are talking about you and talking about you in a good light and you're responding to the ones that maybe um, happen to have a bad one there. All right, so, so before before we get um, forward on, on our, the proven method of the rank of the three pack, um, our, was was that helpful and, and uh, insightful for you guys in terms of what, could be hindering your your map pack presence here currently.
perfect. We got it helpful. Um, got it very helpful. Awesome, awesome. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. So now, now, now we're going to start going over our proven formula for getting ranked in, in the three pack, kind of the meat and the purpose that um, you're here today because you want to grow your business. And so we want to show you kind of this, the steps that we take with, with all our clients uh, that really shows that they, they get up there and ranking into the map pack and really building and bringing the cars into their job. And the first thing you want to make sure that you do is claim and optimize your Google My Business. So you, you want to make sure that there isn't some random person that claimed your business and now you're not able to manage it. You, you wanna make sure you're managing it consistently. So then that way you're updating your hours, you're updating your photos, everything along those lines, which we'll go, we'll go into more here in a second. And then the second thing you wanna make sure are building your citations and the consistency of the name, address and phone number. So in the, the digital marketing world, it's called NAP. And so the NAP, and that way those things need to match across the board. Because again, within Google's algorithm, it's just sort of reading those three pieces and ensuring that they're matching. And the more they see it matching across the, a, a variety of websites, the stronger the um, reputation and power that you, you build within Google, Google's eyes. And then third, we're gonna be going over getting lots of reviews, lots of real reviews. We, you don't, we don't want you to get a bunch of spam reviews of people, family and friends that haven't even used your service before. So you, you, wanna, you wanna build how you get that customer that you perform a service for, um, and they, their, their car came into your shop and then how to get them now to get feedback on if you left a good, good service and then giving, them, giving you a five-star review. So at the end of the day, you want to build that reputation online. And then lastly, we're going to quickly go over on-page SEO um, because we want to make sure that you, you've built the, your, your name and address and phone number, things like that on your website to match to your Google My Business, but also the the meta descriptions and title tags to make sure that flows correctly to Google to make sure it understands the services that you do perform that you can rank well in the map. All right, first we're, we're gonna go over claiming and optimizing Google My Business and listing. And so I don't know how many of you manage it yourself. I don't know how many of you have a marketing company managing it or your friend managing it, but at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that you have a login for your Google My Business account. And so we've run into, um, quite a few situations where we, we bring on a client and they have honestly no idea what the username and password is of, of their Google My Business account. And that creates a huge problem because now you have to go through the process of either trying to claim it or starting from scratch. And so you want to make sure you at least have a username access to get in there where you can go and look at things or if something happens to whoever is managing it. Maybe you change directions with them or something drastic happens that at least you can go in there and access it. You don't need to be dependent on someone else. Um, secondly, you wanna update your company name to read company name. Like I mentioned, you do not wanna add keywords in there. Uh, we've seen it multiple times where people have added keywords and they're at the top of the map pack and that is great. I'm, I'm really happy for those shops that, that it's working for them right now but Google cracks down. And so the, eventually you'll start to see that, that business really drop off because that's not their real business name. Right? Google understands that they're just trying to spam keywords in there. And so third thing you wanna do is make sure you add a website address. There's, there's a lot of people that they create their Google My Business, but then they, don't, they forget to then link their website to the Google My Business. That, that's a, it's an important inbound link that you're missing out on if you're not um, updating that website address. So you wanna make sure that it stays up to date on what your real website is. So if you change your domain name, you wanna make sure that it gets instantly updated in Google My Business right away. And then you wanna use a local number. Um, and th this doesn't pertain to as many shops, but I have seen a few shops where they, they like to give themselves the, um, the clout, I guess, of having a 800 number to make it look like they're branded um, like sort of nationwide. But when it comes to auto repair shops, people want that local feel. And so you want to make sure that you're using a local number with a good area code. Maybe like if you have a cell phone from out of town and, and from the time being, you're using that number, I would just invest in having a local number because it will in the long run be much more beneficial for your business and a lot more trust with the customers that are coming in knowing that you're, you're a local business. And then you want to use a local address, no PO boxes, UPS store or whatever it may be, um, you want just the shop. That's that's it. Have that address. That's where you want people to go because that's where also you want your citation to be built upon. And then we, we have down here, upload photos and as many as possible. It's very, very crucial. You upload 
you upload photos and it's not just uploading a photo of the car, you upload personal photos, photos of the team, photos of the owner, photos of the office, just things that really relate with people. They, 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 don't, they don't just want to see um, sort of spammy photos that almost look like stock photos. They, they want that personal touch. They want to see what you guys are doing. Even, even when it's things outside of the shop, maybe you went on um, a team offsite or you, you did a charity event. You, you want those pictures in there and uploading them, explaining what you guys did. because it really helps build that relevance with Google and uh, really starts getting those photos viewed across the board. And then you wanna, lastly, you wanna make sure your hours, are, your hours of operation and your services that you offer are all listed there. Your hours are crucial to make sure that they're up to date because if um, some people forget and they just leave it at 24 seven. And again, you're, you don't want people calling when you don't have anyone to answer. And then you get a bad reputation of, oh, this business says they're open, but they weren't really open. And then for services, you wanna make sure you list all the services that you, you perform because Within Google, if someone's typing in brake repair, but you forgot to put brake repair as a service that you offer in your Google My Business that really hinders you, and, and that Google doesn't, it can't just read your mind and know that that's a, that's a thing that you perform, it, it, you just need to make it as easy for it as possible. You need to make sure you list those services down there. And so here, here's kind of the back end of, of Google My Business. Just so you can see it, if you haven't seen it before, um, this is, this is the home you can go, this is where you can go to info um, and then you go to add photo here, this is where you can go and upload as many photos as possible. There's also an analytics breakdown of, of the performance and seeing how many views um, your, your Google map is, um, is building. Um, you can also then go even further seeing how many calls, et cetera, and the, just that overall activity. You can really manage a lot, a lot in here, manage your reviews, you can manage your direct messages, um, this is where you would link the website if you haven't already done so. And then you also want to make sure you're doing posts because, I mean, yes, how often are people really looking at these posts within Google, but Google loves it when you're using their service. Because if they see you using your service more often, that just helps them build relevancy. You're also able to throw in keywords in there. So it's a really beneficial um, thing to make sure that you're going in and doing. But here, um, Clicking on insights, you can you can see even the total views of, of how your business is performing on both the search and the maps. And then you can see the breakdown of how many people clicked within the map of visiting you, giving you a call. So this isn't someone clicked on the website and then gave you a call. This is literally they're in the map and they, there's just that direct call button because you put you put your phone number in in there and how many times people give gave you a call. Um, straight from Google My Business. And so it's, and it's always usually a, a one month period that they'll give you, but you're able to filter out um, by quite a different, few different parameters. And so best practices, again, um, are gonna be definitely updating your photos and adding them on a consistent basis. And then we have in here also the geotag them. So, so Google is really smart and it will understand where you are taking photos, but it doesn't hurt to tag photos on, in different locations um, in, in sort of a radius away from your shop. You want to, you don't always want your photos to be tagged right at your shop because that, yes, that builds a dominant presence right where you're located, but already it, searching for an honor repair shop is very location dependent. And so you want to make sure that now you're expanding your services and Google understands, oh, people oh, like three miles away from the shop in this, in this town are also searching for me. And thus I do go understands that you should be ranking higher. And then you want to be leveraging Google posts by posting at least once every 90 days. We honestly recommend at least once a week, um, if not twice a month, just to make sure that you're really involved with Google My Business and really showing Google that you're leveraging their service, but at least once every 90 days. And then you want to make sure you respond to reviews. There's a lot of times where people have the their people are leaving customers are leaving them five star reviews and they're just not responding to them or even even worse when it's a bad review and they don't respond to those people like to see their the business is, is involved they're aware of what's going on even a simple thank you but within that thank you you can even say thank you for like you know who that person is you know what service you perform for them just say thank you for coming to the shop to for your oil changer thank you for coming for your brake replacement and that's a keyword in and of it, in and of itself in that review. And so just um, make sure that you respond to those reviews. So it's a great opportunity for you there. And then ask, answer the questions that get posted. So you're able to post questions yourselves as well as some people um, ask questions on there and make sure you're answering them thoroughly. Um, that way um, within Google, again, it understands you're able to layer in, layer in the keywords 
and it knows that you perform these different types of things and and just people customers see that you're involved with with your google my business so that, now, now that leads us to the second thing and that's building citations and consistency with the nap or name address phone number as as we um like the short to knit for two um and so there are lots of citations across the web. So we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of citations. There's some very general ones like yellow pages or even your Facebook and Yelp page. So those are citations where you have your business name, address and phone number where you, where, when you set up that profile. But then there's also local, local websites that are say citations with, within Houston, so citations within Winchester. So they're just, you want, you want to make sure that you're finding these different websites, getting your business added to um, these listings to make sure that Google can start recognizing them. And then you want to build that consistency again. Um, Google's algorithm can only know so much. It can't just attach because you put um, an apostrophe instead of um, or having ink at the end of your business name with a period. And then sometimes you don't have a period and sometimes you don't have ink in general. You wanna make sure it's all matching and very consistent. So that way it's very easy for Google to link the businesses together and knowing that it's one and the same thing. And then you wanna limit the duplicate and incorrect business information. Um, sometimes you may accidentally create multiple Google My Businesses or multiple citations within the same website. You wanna make sure you don't do that because then again, then your website, your business starts to look like, like it's spammy because you're trying to do too much. And the one, one, one way that, we're, um, that we leverage and we help our, our clients get into as many citations as possible is through leveraging these data aggregators. So these are, these are the big four in terms of data aggregators are Factual, Axiom, Infogroup, Newstar. And so what they do is you type in your info, your business information into one of these systems and they sort of blast it out and distribute it out to all these different citation websites. So that way you only need to update one place um, instead of going to each individual website. And so, yes, they are all paid websites, but they do save you a lot of time and investment at the end of the day. So highly recommend looking in these data aggregators and updating um, your business, especially say you, you move shop, you, you move your shop um, across the street. And so you, you need to update your address. You don't want to go one by one to every single citation, go jump onto one of these data aggregators and, and update that information and I'll blast it out and, and update it all for you. And then we have, then we have tools that then analyze your citations what you currently have as well as you can then type in your competitors websites so these are these are some of the bigger bigger ones we have bright local white spark white spark is the usually the software that we leverage um, we have advice local Moz local and yext so yext is another another big one in, in the industry because they have api integrations with some of the biggest citation websites and so it could be a good powerful website to, to leverage but what this does is it allows you to see again all the citations you have it allows you to see the name, address, and phone number, and how you have it listed in these um, directory listing websites, and then making sure they match, and making sure it says what you want it to say. Because if it doesn't match, you can you can just quickly go to that website and update it. And so that's and again, I know that that's something that probably takes a little bit of time. And so if that's something that you're interested in offloading, that's something that we can definitely um, we help our clients take care of and making sure that they don't need to touch citations at all. Well, we we go through and take care of of all all those citations for them on a, on a regular basis. So best practices for part citations. You want to make sure you're you're manually claiming and optimizing your Google My Business to ensure that your citations are matching across the board. You want to get listed in those major data, data aggregators, like I mentioned. Um, we'll, we'll we'll be able to send that list out um, to anyone that that maybe you, you forget what those data aggregators are. But we'll we'll be able to go through those and, and make sure that you have access to those. You, you can go in and check and see how your citations are being listed on kind of the, those major ones. And then you want to leverage a tool um, like like Yext or even WhiteSpark to make sure you find those niche listing and opportunities that maybe your competitors are leveraging, and then making sure you get on those too. There's a lot of again, a lot of these web, these citation directories are free, but there's again, there's a mundane process where you need to go through putting your name, address, and phone number over and over again. But it definitely helps within Google's algorithm, so it's worth it. And here you can see what, um, we've gone over and we've made a sort of a list of websites that you can go through to make sure that you're listed on and ensuring that it's matching your business. And so here we have Yelp, Yellow Pages, Yahoo, Super Pages, AutoMD. And so we, we have a mix of both general listing pages as well as um, some more slightly auto-specific auto ones. 
here again, we have more, more listings uh, in terms of just best citations, best all site types, best brands that, that we've seen in terms of the auto repair industry and how, how best they're performing across the board in terms of citations. All right. And so, so far, I want to stop right there real quick before we go into number three. Um, if you want to give me a, a one, if this has been really helpful or, um, or you can give me something else if it hasn't been, but hopefully, hopefully I see a lot of ones here. Um, yep. We have one, 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 one. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you guys. So, all right. So we'll, we'll go into number three and that's getting lots of real reviews. So it's very important to, to get lots of reviews. Cause like I mentioned before, about 97% of the people that come to any business before showing up, they read at least one review. So you want to make sure that you're getting lots of reviews, lots of real reviews, and lots of five-star reviews. And so one of the best ways that we've seen to drive consistency with, with the reviews is, is through leveraging tools to request a review after every service call, whether this be through email marketing, text message marketing, which we'll go over more in a second, because definitely it is a, um, a passion of ours in terms of leveraging text messaging. We've, we believe it's the best mechanism. But there are also other sources and tools out there to make sure that you have this automated and um, review requests get sent out. Uh, another thing we believe is, is really good is leaving a printed review card. So a lot of people, I mean, especially this day and age, are getting away from print. But that leaves a very personal touch and it also builds a brand within the, the text and it kind of um, holds them accountable a little bit or where you would have a, a blank a blank card that then shows please leave us a review a link to then go to to leave a review and then it shows the name of the tech that made that performed the service there and so what you can do then is uh, as you start seeing reviews and then people leave reviews saying so and so left to care of my car and did an amazing job then each month you can sort of reward those people and, and then that kind of just builds this foundation within your business that reviews are crucial reviews are important but it's also holds them accountable and make sure that they're performing work um, really well and so it just kind of it trains your text to plant the seed and deliver kind of that world-class experience and at the end of the day you want to make sure you're leaving a great customer experience because as you you focus on the customer that naturally will expand and more and more people will keep showing up through, through the shop because they know that they're going to get an amazing experience with you and so Another thing to even take a step further than that, though, is even make a call after the service to walk them through the review process. Some people struggle um, to, to, to leave those reviews. And so it doesn't hurt if, if, say, there's some downtime in the day to then reach out to a list of people that you haven't, like, within the last week or so that you've seen haven't left a review yet and ask them if they, if they need help walking through that process. And more often than not, people are going to say, yes, absolutely. If you could help me, that'd be great. And you can walk them through, you, you quickly get a, a great review because you're right there on the phone with them and, and really showing you're committed to them and really caring. And so with that, that builds reviews and recognition into, into your company culture. And once, once that's bred and as new people come on board, they quickly understand that reviews are important because it just represents um, your business and what you're trying to do for the community. And like I mentioned before, the best tool that we've seen to really get review generations through text message marketing. I mean, if you think about all the different mechanisms nowadays, what, what is read most often? Is it email? Is it text? Is it your, your Facebook messenger? Um, it's it's going to be text messages. I mean, you can't help but open open that uh, notification when you, when you see a text come through. And it's, it's the same for a lot of other people. And so through that, you, you definitely will want to leverage text message marketing in some shape or form. Now, it doesn't mean just spamming your customers with a bunch of text to believe you or review. Um, typically, what, what, what we try to do is send a first initial text message asking, um, just thanking them for coming to the shop and then asking if they're happy with the service performed. And that way it gives an opportunity that if, if they said no and they weren't unhappy, you can handle that before a bad review comes through. And then if they say yes, then, then you send a link that says, great, and if, if you wouldn't mind, we would love it if you would leave us a review with a, with a, a quick link that just directs them straight there. And so an, another thing that you can do is, I know, I know a lot of people use different um, shop management tools, but Techmetric being one of the big ones nowadays, you can directly correlate the API with Twilio. This is a text messaging um, company that we leverage. 
And so that way, when uh, a repair order gets complete, it notifies Twilio and then immediately kind of sets up a workflow where, okay, 30 minutes after service performed, text message should go out. If they respond, this message goes out. If it's if it's a no answer, then it should be forwarded to the right person. So you just really leverage automation here. So that way you don't need to manually do these things and you will start to see, see and reap the benefits of more and more reviews. And then, so lastly, we, we, want, we want to talk about on-site optimization. And so with, within, within Google Maps, you may think like, okay, well, why, why is it important for now my website to also be strong um, that then correlates to, to my, map, my map pack ranking? And well, you're, you're putting your website link on there. And a lot of times people won't just call you directly from the map. I mean, that, that does happen a good portion of times, but they'll, they'll, they'll click on the business first and go to the website and just briefly see what it's about. So you wanna make sure you build a strong website with good content and user experience. In terms of content, you wanna make sure that you have keywords featured in there that Google understands that you perform. You wanna make sure the services that you list on your Google Maps are also services that are listed on your website. Because again, if they're not speaking to each other, Google will not rank you properly in the map for them. And so you wanna leverage uh, multimedia to improve on, on that page time as well. And you, you wanna make sure that people are having a good experience on your website. It's loading quickly. Um, it, it, it's tap friendly in terms of mobile friendly where they can just tap on the phone number that's listed there. Um, some people aren't comfortable um, giving you a call. So you wanna leave a contact form where they can just list that information. And then you just, at the end of the day, making sure that car comes to your shop. And then you wanna break out pages for each of your services. And so we've seen it where some people are a little bit more general where they just have a service page and then they just have a bullet point listing of all the services they perform. That's great, but you have a, with a little bit more work, you, you can create a server, you can create a page for each service that then allows you to put in more content, which Google appreciates. Because again, Google Google's algorithm can determine how nice a website is. It can determine the user experience itself. So really all I can do is read the words that are there. And so you want to make sure you, you have enough words that Google properly understands what you do and where you do it. And then if you have multiple locations, you want to make sure you have a location page for each city that you're serving in. You do not want to have your homepage optimized for four or five cities all at once because then Google gets confused and then you don't get optimized across the board. So you want to make sure that if you're in multiple locations that you have specific pages set aside for each of those locations. You talk generally about how you serve the area, different services that you do in the area. Um, Keep, keep keep it simple, but then also just make sure you have it. Because again, you wanna make sure that Google can pick up and understand how to rank your website for the different areas that you're in. And you wanna make sure it's a unique content on every page. So there, there, there are some, some companies that sometimes take slight shortcuts, or if you say you order, you're ordering content from a different platform and they're, they're not, you're, you weren't able to do it yourself. And so you wanna order content from a platform. Make sure that content is unique. Um, you don't. If Google's algorithm will quickly pick up if this content is on another auto repair shop, even in the nation. I mean, granted, you want that's a little bit harder for it, but it can still pick it up in terms of just like, oh, these exact words and paragraphs are listed elsewhere. So you want to make sure it is all unique. And then you want to make sure keywords are in the title and H1 tags, uh, meta descriptions that sell the clicks, name, address, phone number, and the footer. And then blog, um, having, having a blog that just has ongoing updates with, with some syndication across the board. So with, with those things that, that, that really has, we've, we've seen a big uptick in helping our clients making sure they're ranking the feedback. So again, to summarize, it's claiming that, that Google My Business listening, make, making sure it's optimized. Like I mentioned, you want to make sure you at least have access. You, you do not want to suddenly have someone claim claim your business because they're being spammy. And then you have no way of canceling that from happening because Google does leave a, a seven day period where you can say no, like that this person should not be claiming this business. But if you didn't have access, then you had no idea that that happened. So just make sure that you do have access to those things. You wanna build your citations across the board, make sure they're speaking to each other, make sure they're matching, make sure you get a lot of reviews and then make sure you have um, that on page SEO. All right, and so, I mean, and as, as like a little bit of a bonus, page SEO is also important. So citations are, are built in with that, but then also within that, I wanna talk a little bit about backlinks. 
And so backlinks, if you're not already aware, backlinks are that hyperlink you find on blog posts or articles that when you click on it, it leads to another website. And so within Google's algorithm, it sort of loves this because it's like another website's referring you. And the more referrals you get, just, just like in, in the real world with, within people, the more referrals you get, the higher in relevancy you appear in, in Google's eyes. And so you wanna make sure that those things are getting built regularly. Um, and then that really helps with your organic search rating. And by ranking well organically, that will help you consistently be in the map pack. And so we leverage a system called Ahrefs in here that analyzes your website and, and make sure it understands your offsite SEO performance, as well as we, we go and analyze some of your top competitors and what they're doing via offsite SEO and why maybe they're gaining so much ground a lot quicker than, than you are. You want to satisfy um, the search a little bit here. So um, the algorithm is hunger for EAT. So EAT just stands for expertise, authority, and trust. And so you want to build that expertise through quality, rich, rich, rich content. You want to build authority by making sure it gets published on some of the, some of the bigger websites. Um, there's syndicators out there that you can then blast out your website out to some of these big, big websites to make sure you're getting that power. And then you, you build that trust and make sure that you've got that trust in, in, in the page ranks. All right, and here, here's sort of a very high level SEO periodic table to show that um, it, is, it is a science and, and there, there are bad things involved. But again, um, we know you wear a lot of hats. So if it's something that it's a hat that you're not wanting to wear, please feel free to reach out and we'd be happy to um, see what we can possibly do and, and help you out then. But, a step further than that, though, you want to make sure that anchor text is is a keyword. And so here's just a, just a simple example of, of the link being blower motor resistor. So this being the keyword and it's clickable. Um, then that way, Google understands that this is a keyword that you should be ranked for. It's not just your business is clickable because already, I mean, if someone types in your business, more than likely you're going to be the top website. And if it's not, there's a lot more problems there. You want to definitely... Um, kind of start from the beginning of what we talked about here to build that up. But as, as we get further along, you can start building for more niche related um, keywords through through building the proper anchor text. All right, so all in all, here's, here's sort of an SEO summary and checklist of, of things you should be doing to, to make sure that you're optimizing your SEO. That's something that we can definitely provide. Um, I, we know people love, love their checklists and so here, Here's just kind of on page, GMB, your Google, GMB is just short for Google My Business, ongoing content, um, signals, leverage. And lastly, um, before I let y'all go, I want to go over local Viking and how we really understand how you are appearing in the map. And so here you see this is bad rankings, everything's red, some numbers are appearing. So what, what local Viking does is allows um, us to type in a business and then type in a search phrase. So in this situation, I typed in this business, typed in the word auto repair for, for them, and then I, I filtered it to a three mile, um, yeah, three mile radius. And so each bubble was a one mile away from the center point of the business. And so here you can see it on how they're appearing within the top 15 of the Google Maps for the auto repair search from these given locations away from their shop. So right on top of their shop, the fact that they're not appearing is a huge red flag um, that just really tells me that the Google My Business is not being set up properly. Uh, so you definitely wanna look at the radius. You should at least at minimum be performing really well within this one mile radius within the one threes. But as you get expand, you really wanna dominate this three mile radius away from your shop and really making sure that people know and understand about you. And so then in a short amount of time, we we, we made some tweaks to, to this business. And then you, you can see here, how, how they're performing much better being in the top threes, um, not only in this mile radius, it starts to expand a little bit and, and appearing more often. And so, yeah. Hopefully you, you, you enjoyed what, what we talked about today. Like I mentioned, the, these are all things that, that we perform diligently for our clients. And so if it's something you'd be interested in, um, we, we, do, we do free strategy sessions. In these sessions, we go over your online visibility, we go over custom keyword lists of the most important search terms in your area um, through leveraging softwares like Keyword Finder, where we can really see different search phrases, how often they're appearing in your location. We'll give you a ranking report showing you where you're ranking currently. Um, the geogrid breakdown, just like what I showed you there um, in terms of a five mile radius away from your shop. 
analysis of your online directories and listings, making sure that consistency, consistency is built there. And then analysis of your online reviews and reputation, analysis of your social presence. So we, we really take a deep dive in this strategy session with you to make sure that you are in the, the most complete position to really grow your business and making sure cars are consistently coming to the shop, make sure you're dominating your local area. And if it's something you're interested in, you can give us a call here at, at our number, or you can even go to this link, this website, um, www.liftautorepairmarketing.com slash schedule a strategy session with us. And you can, get, you can definitely get on our calendar there. On top of that, um, we also have a free internet marketing checklist. Um, not only will it go over some of the things we talked about for the Google Maps, but also some other optimizations in terms of your website and, and things you, you want to make sure that either it's already being taken care of for you or that you can go in and take care of yourself. Again, it's just it's, it's going to be a nice, easy PDF copy for you where you can just then check all the boxes to make sure it's done. And then, And if you're interested in that, just go to go.liftautopermarketing.com slash marketing checklist. All right, and then lastly, our Facebook group. Um, we, we created a Facebook group for our pair own, owners um, where they can share tips and ideas with each other to help each other grow. Granted, we're in there as well, um, sharing marketing tips, but um, it, it's more about the, the shop owners coming together, making sure that um, everyone's building each other up because we really, we really want to help this industry um, grow and perform. And we, wanna, we want owners to be able to take that time off that, they so desperately need because we, we, we understand that running a shop is hard and and so we want to make sure that then one less thing is taken off your plate in terms of marketing being run efficiently and then that way you can have that financial freedom that time freedom and spending time with those that that you love so again if you want to join that group it's just um, auto repair owners mastermind if you type that into facebook you should be able to find us all right and so if if there are any any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions here. As, but unless there are not any questions, then we'll, we'll get going. So we got a question in terms of what are keywords. So key keywords are things that people are typing in most often in Google. So like auto repair or mechanic near me, things like that. And so you want to make sure that those keywords are perf are filtered throughout your content, um, not spammy, but but, but naturally. And so by having an abundance of content, usually we recommend about 1,000 to 1,500 words on your homepage and um, like 500 to 750 words on your service pages, but making sure that then you can layer in those, those keywords that people are searching. Because And then you also want to make sure you have those higher ARL, higher ticket items in terms of brake repair, engine repair, uh, and transmission replacement, things like that. All right. Um, okay, yeah, this is another great question. Um, do, do you guys perform like within another, like one of this other shop that you're already helping within my location, do you help them? Um, we, we, if we already have a customer in a location, we do not help another customer. Um, we, we make sure we reach, usually we give that customer at least a five mile radius that we have, but we reach out to them directly, even if it's outside of that, um, because we, we hold our customers first and foremost, just like we hope that you're doing for your customers, but we do not want to compete against ourselves. We want um, our clients to be the best in an area and really build that foundation with them. And how do you geotag a photo with a specific location? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great question. Um, so there, there there's a method that we do um, with within a, within a software that then tags um, coordinates of, of where it would be away from the shop. So usually we will, we will tag um, coordinates of a certain location away from the shop. Um, but that that's. Uh, a little bit too 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 technical, so I don't want to go too deep into that today. But all right, um, thank you all um, for for um, coming today to the to the webinar. If if anyone else has any questions or you want to reach out directly to us, feel <coughs> feel free to give us a call. And if if you're wanting to see a strategy session, um, feel free to go come to the website again www.liftautorepairmarketing.com/schedule a strategy session. And thank you all. Um, I hope you have a good night.